Today we are going to create this shield made out of hexagon. It will react to objects you throw at it. It absorbs the energy and slowly dissipates it with tiny ripples. And of course, we have full control over how we reveal the shield. So, let's get started. I am currently in Blender 4.0 beta. You can use Blender 3.6 as well to achieve this effect. Add a mesh plane to get started. I rename it to shield and go to the geometry nodes workspace. Create a new geometry node setup. I call it shield as well. Pin it. Since I am hoping to create the spherical base shape inside geometry node, I don't need the initial geometry. So delete this group input. Add a mesh primitive icosphere. I increase the subdivisions to 4 and the radius to 2 meters. The reason I am not using the UV sphere for this is that the icosphere is coming with triangular faces. You can see that when I enable wireframes in overlays. Having triangular faces is important for our next step of converting these into hexagons. For that, add mesh operators dual mesh node. This will convert our faces to hexagon. Well, not entirely. Here you can see we have a pentagon shape. But I won't worry about that. What this dual mesh node does is that it converts vertices into faces and faces into vertices, giving us this hexagonal shape. So, to create hexagon shape, you will need triangular faces. If your mesh doesn't have tries, for example, here I add a grid node. To convert these faces to hexagon, first I add a triangulate node to convert these to tries. Then add a dual mesh node to convert them to hexagon. Same process goes for any custom shapes. Okay, I delete this one and connect this back again. We have our shield. I frame these. Now I want something to throw at this, something to hit the shield. I am not hoping to make a bullet firing mechanism that could be a tutorial for the future. Today I am just going to make a few balls hit the shield. So place a UV sphere and scale it down like this. Put that into a new collection. I call it bullets. I enable snapping to vertices and start duplicating the spheres around the shield. This will place them on the surface, adjust their position. These will be the impact points of these bullets. Then I set automatic keying for location and turn off the record button. Create a keyframe here for all these spheres. Then I take each sphere and place it outside of the shield. Adjust the keyframe position as well. These will be the starting position of the spheres. After that, I take that frame, duplicate it and paste it after the second key. This way, bullets comes in, hit the shield and go back to the initial position. This is good enough to demonstrate our bullet impact effect. Now I go back to the geometry nodes workspace and enable random shading. This will help us to see things clearly. To start creating the bullet impact effect, I drag and drop the bullets collection into the scene. Set it to relative and enable separate children. To convert this to something we can easily work with, I add an instance to points node. Connect these two. Now when I hide the bullets collection, you can see we have these points representing those bullets. For the impact effect, First, I need to find the closest point and how far those points are located from the shield. For that, I can use Geometry Proximity node. View it with the shield. Make sure to change this to points. I click on this again to view this distance output. You can see when the points get closer than 1 meter, we get these black spots. Then I plug a map range node into this. Flip the two min and two max values. 
this way if a bullet is far away than 1 meter this will output 0 hence the color black when it is on the shield surface distance will be 0 so it will output 1 which is white and gradient for in between values this 1 meter threshold is controlled by this from max value lower the value more accurate our impacts will be for this demonstration i go with 0.2 you can make it lower than this, but the issue is if your bullet is moving way faster, this calculation might not catch it because it is calculating frame by frame. We can create a more accurate setup, but we probably have to create both shield and the bullet firing system all inside the same geo setup, which is probably not ideal. Also, if your bullet is moving fast, then this slight inaccuracy might not even be visible or you can call it a feature of your shield anyway right now if a bullet gets destroyed or leave its place you can see we lose that heat reserves i want to store these hits in our shield for that i will use simulation nodes add simulation zone to our shield To store our hit results, I add store name attribute node. I call it hit. Connect it like this. But in order to take previous frame calculations to this attribute, I add name attribute node. Copy paste our attribute name and add it to our calculation using add math node. Make sure to check this clamp box. It will make sure values will not exceed 0 to 1 range. Since simulation nodes run this calculation on a loop, it will store hit data in this attribute and when the next frame comes, it will add this to the new frame hit results and store it as the new hit attribute. To view this in action, I duplicate this name attribute node and view it with simulation output. Make sure to put your timeline header at the start to refresh the simulation. And you can see our heat data is stored nicely. I like to spread this heat area without affecting our accuracy threshold. For that, I put blur attribute node here and give it a few iterations. You can see that now we are getting a bit more spread out results. I turn down the iteration to 2. Right now, our shield takes those impacts and stores them forever, but I want to slowly dissipate them. For that, I duplicate this add node, place it here and change it to multiply. Make sure the clamp box is checked. And for the value, I put something closer to 1, like 0.9 for example. The lower you go, quicker the dissipation will be. If you want the heat results to last longer, bring this value as close as you want to 1. Don't put 1 or anything higher. Now when I scrub the timeline, you can see once they receive heat results, they slowly start to dissipate. But since we started with hexagonal shapes, I like to see our shapes in these calculations as well. Right now they are calculating based on points or vertices. That's why you see these triangulated results. So I change this store attribute domain type to face. This way it stores data into the faces of the shield. Hence the results will take hexagonal shapes. Actually if you want you can randomize these values to make this effect non-uniform. Use a random value node and plug it into here. But here with hexagons, I find uniform values look better. I frame this and call it impact effect. So that's it for our heat calculations. Let's see how we can use this data to improve our shield effect. Let's create a ripple effect. For that, first I take our heat attribute and blur it even more. Since I blur it outside of the simulation zone, I can view it in real time without refreshing the simulation. Let me increase the subdivisions of the sheet. I blur it little more like this, 7 iterations. 
Remember, when you blur the attribute, its values become smaller. Here you can see our hit effects becomes darker. So, to bring it back to 0 to 1 range, I can use attribute statistic node. Plug this into geometry. Change this to faces. Now, take this attribute, plug it into a map range node. Now, I find the current maximum value of the attribute from here and plug it to from max. View it. You can see it creates a 0 to 1 values based on the current maximum value of that frame. It looks good on a steel frame, but when it plays, you can see it has this snappy feeling. And I am not a fan of that. So, I remove this statistic node. Let's add a value manually to lift the values of these impacts. Here, I add something like 0.2 for from max input. This value will depend on your threshold and the iterations you add to the effect. So, play with that value to find a result that gives you that full 0 to 1 range. Okay, let me tell you exactly how I am going to create the ripples. Right now, we have values that go from roughly 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. If I multiply that with a higher value like 20, we can increase that value range. Then I take sine value of that value range, which gives us this kind of a wave pattern. Values going between 1 and negative 1. We can use this sine wave to create our ripple effect. At the moment, it goes from 0 to 1, back to 0, and then to negative 1, and comes back to 0, like that. But if I take those negative values, and turn them into positive values, we can get something like this. And after that, we can smooth out these rough corners. There are so many ways to make this wave pattern. Another way is taking this wave pattern and remapping it to simply go between the 0 to 1 range. Starting with 0.5, the minimum value becomes 0. So, Let's use one of these methods to create the ripple effect. I grab from here and search for multiply math node. Multiply this with a higher value. Let's do 10 for now. Higher the value, more ripples you will get. But also you will need a more dense mesh to see it clearly. Then duplicate this and set it to sign. This will create that sign wave. Now, to convert negative values to positive values, duplicate this again and this time choose absolute. To smooth out the rough corners, I plug a float curve node and adjust it like this. It is not quite visible in this example. To see it clearly, you will have to increase the face count and the blur amount. That's one way of doing this, but I like to use the other method of remapping the values. So, I delete this and plug a map range node after the sign node. Input values are going from negative 1 to 1, so I put it here like this. And I want those to go from 0 to 1. This gives us that waves pattern, but also changes the surrounding area. So, I will multiply this with our previous 0 to 1 hit results and get something like this. But I want this to be very subtle and I am not a big fan of tiny hexagon shapes. So I go back to the previous subdivision and blur values. So this is our ripple effect. Now I want these ripples to displace the faces of the shield. But since these hexagonal faces join to each other, it will look weird when displacing. So, I will split them into separate faces. For that, drag from here and add split edges node. After that, I add scale elements node. Since we separated each face, using this node, we can scale each individual face. Here, I reduce their scale just a bit. But this also introduces us to a tiny issue. You can see 
Now, if I view these separated faces with our ripples, it is not what we created. I mute and unmute this blur attribute node and it makes no difference. This happens because when we separate the faces, it doesn't really know which are its closest values to blur them. So to fix it, I put a store attribute node here before splitting edges. Plug our ripples into it. I call it ripples. Change the domain type to face. Then add a named attribute node to view this with separated faces. And it is working. Our blur is working nicely. So we spent a lot of time creating the ripples. Let's use it to actually displace these hexagons. To displace anything inside geometry nodes, we can use set position node and change this offset value to displace the mesh. I want these faces to displace along its normal. To get access to that normal direction, I can search for normal node like this. Then I add a vector map scale node and plug our ripples into scale socket. You can see it displacing the faces. I like to reduce the displacing amount. So I duplicate this scale node again and put it here and set it to 0.1. That's fine, but I want it to go inwards. So I change this to negative 0.1. And that is our ripple displacement effect. Now to creating a simple revealing effect for our shield. For that, I add an empty sphere and call it Reveal controller. Place it like this in the scene and drag and drop it into the setup. Set it to relative. This is a method I use to mask out things in many of my previous videos. I am going to calculate the distance from each point position and empties location using vector map distance node. This will give us how far our mesh points are located from the controller origin. To mask out certain areas from it, I use compare less than node. Since our empty's radius is equal to its scale, I can use this scale value for this B input. This masks every vertices which are inside the empty sphere. We can use this mask to reveal the shield. Before that, I like to add some noise to the edge of the mask. For that, I make some space here and add a color mix node. Plug a noise texture into the second input. Change the blend type to linear light. Reduce the factor amount. Now play with the noise texture properties to roughen the mask edge. I add a delete jump node and plug this mask into its selection. Actually, we want the opposite of this, so change this to greater than or equal. To delete the faces, I can change this to face. Here is a little tip. Let's say for some reason you need this mask by faces. There's no option here to create this mask by faces. But what you can do is drag from here and search for evaluate on domain node and change the domain type to face. This will look at the average of the points and gives us a selection by faces. It is not necessary for us since delete jump to node has this domain option. But this could be helpful in some cases, so keep that in mind. Now we have full control over the visibility of the shield. Let's add some thickness to these faces. For that, I add extrude mesh node and I reduce the extrusion to 0.01. In most cases, you might have to disable this individual checkbox. You can see although it extruded our faces, we don't have that initial face here. So to fill this hole, I select this node. Hold Ctrl and Shift and drag to the previous geometry to make a join geometry node. This will add that face back in. This also means we have some overlapping vertices from both meshes. 
to join those overlapping verses, I add a merge by distance node here. You can see here in the spreadsheet, our vertex count was reduced by a lot after that. But before we move on to shading here in the overlays, I enable face orientation. This shows us which faces are facing front and which are facing back. You can see our inside faces are facing back to the outside. This can create issues when we start to add material. So to fix them, I add flip faces node here. This will make sure all of the faces are facing in the right direction. And that's our geo setup for creating this impact reacting shield. You can create so many different looking materials for this shield. I will show you a basic one which covers a few areas you need to know. To add a material, first we need to have a material in the project. So I select our shield object and create a new material. Then here at the very end of the node setup, I add a set material node and assign our material. Let's go to the shading workspace. Here I also have a timeline open. Let's switch to render view on cycles. And I select an HDRI from here. Also, let's add a Susan to get an idea of what this will look like around a subject. I'm going to create glass material that lights up when a bullet hits. So, let's set the transmission to 1. Reduce the roughness to almost 0. Change the IOR value to get a refraction amount you like. I give this glass a slight bluish tint. To create the effect, we can use the attributes we created earlier. Like this ripple attribute. I copy its name and back in the shader editor, I add an attribute node and paste that name. Now we have access to our ripples inside the shader editor. I drag from the factor and add a multiply node. Plug that into emission strength and increase the multiply value. Let's make this light blue. To add two colors to this, I drag from factor again and search for mix node. Change the mix type to color. Add two colors like this and use that as our emission color. Adjust the colors as you want. Also, whenever I add an emission to a material, I like to make the base color of that area black. So, I duplicate this. Copy the base color to first input and change the second color to black. Let's add a bit more contrast to this. I plug a color ramp node to here and adjust it a bit and use that as the factor. Plug this to base color like this. It doesn't make a huge difference but in most cases, this is how I like my insu materials to be. Then add a layer weight node. I am going to use this facing value to add some edge glow to the shield. I add a color ramp and adjust its sliders like this to create a smooth mask around the edges. Multiply it with a map node. And change this to multiply add and add this one to it. And you can see now we have an edge glow on the shield. Let's switch to EV to see how it looks inside it. Well, since we are using refraction, in order to view it clearly inside EV, you need to adjust a few settings. Go to your materials and under material settings, enable screen space refraction. Also enable refraction from render settings. And now we have refraction in EV. And you can see it looks very different to cycles. Well, you can adjust the material values differently for each render engine if you want. To do it without creating two materials, just duplicate all this setup like this. Change this one to EV and the first one to cycles. Now you can change some values here and it will only affect for EV. To see it clearly, I change the MCU color. And 
you can see when we switch between render engines, we get those different material values. Now I can animate the shield revealer location and scale to create the revealing effect. I add an emission material to our bullet as well. Add it to one object and select every other object. Then select the first one back to make it the active object. Then from here you can copy that material to all other bullets. And that is our shield effect. After all this you can bake the simulation and the shield is ready to render. So I hope you learn something cool, something new, I mean that's what we like to do. If you like to take a look at the other shield effects, check the link in the description. As always, project files are available for our generous Patreon members. Until next time.